So my question is, do you feel you sacrifice love for success? And would you have preferred to have both earlier in life? Oh, that's a good question. Mm. Yeah. Um, I believe I chose to sacrifice love for success. I don't believe in this or that. I believe in this and that. And so early on, because I didn't come from that strong, independent woman family, but I thought my mother's femininity was weak because she chose a man that could not honor it. So what I did whoa, was whoa, I... Can you say that again? Can you say that one more I time? Said, I thought my mother's femininity was weak because she was... My mother is very soft. She's very um, loving and catering and all those things, right? And I watched her choose a man that could not honor her femininity. So what happened was I be intentionally made myself hard. I had to come back to, to the middle because I'm, I'm looking at her as... Oh, you're just so passive. Why are you, you know, why he get the big piece of the chicken? Like, why we got to wait, you know? But I understand as a, uh, an adult, a more mature woman, she just chose a man that could not honor that space with her. And so that's when I started learning. You don't have to choose one or the other. And a lot of times we do, we feel like we have to choose. So even with my clients, um, I have this thing called the feminine CEO. We trademark that. And what that is, is we teach women how to be feminine CEOs and have a lifestyle too. So we just, um, and I got this from you. Thank you very much. Um, you and Trap, I was a part of your, you know, you got on me about the podcast at the conference. And so I participated in your five-day boot camp. I said, well, I want to do a five-day boot camp too. So I did it. And I said, I'm going to do exactly his blueprint, do what he did. And it was very successful. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, but in that, what I taught was not just business. Day one was all about what she was just asking, how to do both. And that goes back to what I said earlier. I have my day set. You know, I take time for me in the morning. You know, I go to bed cute on purpose. You know, I sleep on satin pillowcases on purpose. I live a very zen lifestyle. My home, people come over, they just want to go to sleep because it's so peaceful. <laughs> but I also am, uh, like, as we said, a high level performing entrepreneur. I just switch the energy of what I do. It doesn't mean that I don't, um, I have four grandkids. Doesn't mean that I don't play with them and enjoy them, and enjoy my family. However, okay, um, yeah, it's time to come get your children because I have a spa day. Uh, <laughs> you know? And I set, when I plan my schedule as an entrepreneur, I plan my schedule with spa days, with little miniature trips inside of that, outside of my work. I go, I don't know about y'all, but I go flower picking. What that does for me is it allows me to do what I call feminine mindless activities. I'm picking flowers. I'm not doing anything that's requiring me to think. I go paint pottery. So when women ask me, how do I get in that space? Start doing things that do not require a lot of mental for you, mental work. So I always go pick flowers. I go pick strawberries, girl, at the strawberry farm. You will always find me doing little, little mindless things. This weekend, I'm going to go learn how to make fragrances and smell perfumes that keeps me in that feminine energy. So when I know it's time, okay, on Monday, I have this, this, this to do, I have already rested in that and now I'm ready to go. But I intentionally make time in my day. April, I check in with me. How am I feeling right now? Why do I feel this way? Is anybody doing anything to me? What's going on? Am I triggered behind anything? So I have those check-ins with me intentionally. And what I tell my people to do, and you may want to try this, get your phone, Program in your phone messages to go off in your phone to remind you to take a break, to remind you whatever your issue is that you're struggling with, a reminder that says, I am so soft and gentle today. Today, I don't re react, I respond. And just those little gentle reminders, and that's what helped. When the man at the store asks you, can I carry your bag to the store? Say yes. It gets you into the energy of receiving. If the man at the gas station, he might be a, you know, a vagabond. Can I pump your gas for two dollars? Yes. No. Yes, he gonna pump my gas. <laughs> yes, man. I don't. Yeah. What will you do? I don't. You know. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> well, no, I mean, yes, let him pump your gas. But then again, well, you know. Let him pump your gas. <laughs> if let him pump your gas, or if you got a Tesla like I do, let him charge it <laughs> for two dollars. And it gets put the you into reminder that. in your phone. The little put, hey, <laughs> feminine energy <laughs> turned all the way up. Do you hear me? I'm doing nothing. Soft and gentle. Yeah, do, do, do nothing. Do nothing. Just spend a day. 
I am sweet. Nothing. I am flowing. I am in grace. I am a divine feminine energy. Yes. I, I, like so I got to start incorporating these things. But you also are assertive. You have boundaries. And you, I am and you assertive. Have, <laughs> yes. You have boundaries. Yes. I have power. Yes. I am soft. I am yes. Clean. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Let's go, Johnny. <laughs> How are you going to affirm everything? She said, I'm soft, I'm hard, I'm gentle, I'm rough. All that. Yes. Because I don't believe, I, I don't believe I have to choose. You don't. I there is no. I hard and soft. That's I what I was going to say. And sour. Right. I can be both. Like, no. okay. <laughs> and I think we've grown <laughs> up thinking that, that we soft, have bro. to choose. You don't have to choose. <laughs> you do not have to choose. <laughs> Everybody have their own feminine brand. Yep. Right. Yeah. You know, mine is more the softer pink and all of that. I love everything girly, but. Angelita Jolie in Tomb Raider, that was the dark feminine. And that's sexy and, and feminine, and too. So you got to understand everybody's won't look the same. However, our, the place that it comes from is normally the same. But how it's displayed is different. Angelina Jolie, yeah. a feminine killer. Yes. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the model you're going to follow? I can, okay. I can do that. But I, I can also do, you know, whoever those other women are. <laughs> <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> so I have a question about boundaries. I think the word just came up. Mm. And more specifically, I think people talk about boundaries as something that you create for other people. But the question is, what has been the most difficult boundary that you've had to set for yourself to help with your success? Ooh, I was about to one. say, okay. <laughs> Not stepping into someone's space and saying, let me help you. Because mm -hmm. not everyone wants your help. Mm -hmm. Some people enjoy the suffering. Yes. And I hate to say it like that, yes. but they enjoy the suffering. They enjoy being wrong. They enjoy doing it the hard way. No matter if you already have the will, they want to go build an octagon over here or whatever. They just don't like the help. And I've had to learn I can't help every single person that I want to because my heart is there. I want to help the whole world. I want to help everybody win and everybody be happy and we all make money and everybody's just living in 70 acres with our chickens and our yes, goats. Yes, I want a llama. <laughs> I really want a llama. So, you know, I'm, I really, yes, but yes, I had to, yes. yeah, I can't yes. overextend myself to every single person because everybody is not willing to accept it. Some people find it intrusive, yes. very intrusive. They feel like I'm stepping into their space too much or I'm micromanaging. And it's not that. It's like, no, let me show you because I want you to do better. Like I have a toddler. He's potty training or something. <laughs> <laughs> so today he wants to get dressed. He wants to wear Spider-Man underwear, gray sweatpants, a cream colored Timberland shirt, a green jacket, um, and some red and blue shoes, whatever. Baby, let me help you. Let's, no, mom, I got it. Trey, let me help you put this, let me, let me help you match it, right? Like, just to get the right <laughs> colors together. No, mom, I got it. And I'm like, okay, I get it. You know, I have to step back and say, this is, your, this is you and this is what you want to do. Same thing with adults. Not everyone wants your help. And I am, if you know me, I have such a big heart and I'm willing to help everybody. You come to my house and eat if you need a plate on Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever. On the weekend, come to my house, I'm always cooking. Not everybody wants your help. And that was probably the biggest boundary I had to learn for everyone else, not so much myself. Yeah. Another bound another boundary is just learning how to say no. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like no is not no is not a bad word. Um no. I've actually learned the power of no in 2021. Um I'm very much like mm -hmm. you. I'm a giver. If you ask, I'm gonna give. If you don't ask, I'm a give. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've learned how to say no. And, and really learn how to take time for me, which is something that you speak very, very highly of. Like, no is not a bad word, and it's okay to say no. I think we're all saying the same thing. Overextending yourself, mm -hmm. you know? It's, it's a detriment to not only you, but the other person, because if you don't meet those expectations, then now you've created a bad situation. An enemy, um, you disappointed yourself, you're burned out, you can't, be in all these different places, helping all these different people. And I, I found that, like you said, you have to say no. I said yes and then found myself at the shop till 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning. And then people get used to that. Yep. That that's that becomes, the standard. I, I have become the name of, you know, call shade when you're in a clutch. And then now when people, how long have this event been going on? Oh, we've been planning it for months. So you're calling me the day before because what? <laughs> you know, so saying no. 
and not overextending yourself is one of the biggest things. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Go for it, Kyle. So I really believe one of the biggest things that that we have to understand is that women are the tide and men are the ships. And I think a lot of times we don't understand as men as our women rise, we in, indirectly rise as well. And I think one of the conversations and what I really appreciate about the women on the panel is that they haven't bashed, they haven't disrespected or downplayed the importance of respecting and acknowledging and empowering their man. Um, but I guess my question is, how can we better support you um, as women um, when we're in position, when we're in rooms, when we have the knowledge without always just being the coach? How can we better support you? And what does that actually intentionally look like at home and also in the roles of relationships as well? See, I like so, that. I can jump in. I like I'll start that. Go one. ahead. Go ahead. Anyway. Come on. Right. So my number two is my husband. Mm -hmm. I had to teach him the business. He, he doesn't do everything that I do, but he's my number two. He understands the business. He supports me in his own way. And for every individual, support can look different. It could be walking the dog. Like, we have a son. Our son is actually part of our business now. But he's grown. He's 29. He's on the music side. He's into music, so he's managing the artist with me. However... When you, when you ask for, when you talk about support, support is different and everyone needs to be supported differently. It could be from mental support. It could be doing something around the house or taking a load off of the woman's chest. Like I'm going to get dinner. It doesn't, that doesn't necessarily have to be cooking it. It can be, I order dinner and dinner is ready for you whenever you come through the door. Or it could be, I ran a bath water for you, or I, I made the dog's appointment from a personal standpoint, from a business standpoint, everyone's uh, level of support is different. But just for most women, and I think I can speak pretty confident when I say this for most women, just knowing that we have you in our corner to support for whatever carries so much weight. 